series. Do it from scratch. Mike is well known for showing fellow DJs from around the world how to tap into their own DIY do-it-yourself skills by building custom cases, unique lighting brackets, and stands, and even a DMX lighting control training video. It is my honor to introduce to you, Mikey Mike Suska. We have here. You guys, you might want to scoot up. You'll get nice and close with the Nimbus here, and uh, we'll, we'll make this personal. I know the sh shop floor is open up here really quick here, uh, so we're kind of competing with that. But we have some really cool stuff to cover. Uh, I'll try to make it as quick as possible because I know you want to get down to the shop, the show floor. But hey, there's some great stuff that we can do here, and uh, we'll, we'll, we have a lot, a lot of things to cover. How many people here have a Nimbus already? Nimbus already? How many people are getting ready to purchase a Nimbus? Probably here at the show. Okay, well, I'll show you some tips and tricks on. Hey, Alan, can you turn this up just a tiny bit? Uh, down. Just a bit. I'll show you some tips and tricks on what's important about a Nimbus, and uh, we'll go from there. So, things we're going to cover uh, what you're going to need, the types of foggers that are out there, okay? Uh, dry ice handling and transport safety. Oh my god, there's transport safety involved. We've got to think about these kind of things. Now, things you might not think about, okay, and I'm not trying to scare you by any means. This is a totally safe. Uh, atmospheric effect that we can use but you need to know the rules and laws we'll talk about that uh, types of dry ice everybody's seen dry ice before comes in big, pal pa uh, big chunks right you've seen those they also come in pellet form we'll talk about that uh, types of coolers you need to know how to transport this it's real important you don't want to end up with dry ice all over the floor or in the back of your car and you can't even make it to the venue that's important a uh, client and guest safety wow i gotta think about all this stuff we're just talking about a little low-lying cloud effect, right? Fire alarms. Who wants to set the fire alarm off, right? Not me. Can this happen? We'll talk about it. All right. Power management is really important. <laughs> These things draw a lot of current. It's really important we talk about power management. Uh, venue management, lighting, pictures. And the big important thing is how I can make money with this. Dancing on a little money out here. It's real important. That's great. All right, and then we're going to see the Nimbus in action. Alan's going to help me out with that. And actually, you guys can help me out. I might need some special dancers out here on the dance floor. So I can show you actually how the Nimbus can kind of engulf the, uh, the dancers on the floor and different ways to do different styles of, of uh, fog effects. So we'll do that as well. All right? So what you're going to need. Hey, well, we're first we're going to need a Nimbus, right? We definitely have to have the Nimbus. It's the best one out there. A dry ice supplier. Now, it's real important. Uh, before you rush out to purchase your Nimbus, Make sure you can get ice available in your area, okay? Sometimes you can get it right down the street. Other times, I know people that have to drive two, three, and four hours to get their low lying uh, ice effects. So it's important that you know where these things are so you can charge accordingly, okay? So if it's not readily available in your area, but you really want this effect because it's amazing, and believe me when I say it's amazing, it is amazing, okay? But you need to know if you can get ice available for you, when it's available. All right, you're gonna need an ice scooper. Ice scooper? What's up with that? Hey, you just can't scoop it out with your hands and put it in the Nimbus. We need a nice sturdy ice scooper as well. Uh, something from Walmart. We need to get go to, uh, to Smart and Final or somewhere like that to pick us a nice good industrial ice scooper. Some gloves so we can look like a boxing ring out here on the dance floor when we're putting it out there. We need some gloves, right? Keep your hands protected. We need a nice rolling cart. As you can see, Chave has a beautiful rolling cart that they, they produced, and I'll show you ways to do it from scratch as well. And uh, a cooler or a scrim. If you guys can see back here, we got the cooler in the back right here. I have it uncovered for a reason. Okay, if you guys can see it, it's kind of hidden in the back, a little blue cooler. Okay, how many people want to see my six pack of beer in my cooler by my DJ booth, right? Because that's the first thing they're going to think of is the DJ is getting loaded back by there, right? So, well, it might be my cooler of beer, but you never know. All right, 
And then the biggest thing is to practice. Okay, we're gonna talk about that. Practice, practice, practice. Don't grab your Nimbus, break it out of the box, and then go to your event. You know, I got my ice, I got my Nimbus. Oh, I need, what else do I need? I need water, I need all kinds of fun stuff, right? So we're gonna cover those things, all right? There's all kinds of different dry icers and, and dry ice effects out there. There's low-lying fog effects, okay? There's a big difference between a low-lying cloud effect and a low-lying fog effect. A low-lying fog effect can be produced with a, a CO2 chiller, okay? This, everybody's seen those giant welding gas bottles that are about this tall, okay? They have CO2 in them, and then you gotta add a cable or a hose, and you go to a chiller box, which costs about uh, 2,500 bucks, and then you put a fogger behind it, and then you shoot that into there, and then it creates a low-lying cloud effect and a super chill fog. And what does that fog do after it warms up? It goes up. And then what happens to the fire alarms? Damn it, that's bad. Everybody agrees, if the fire alarms go off in your building, it is bad. And what do we try to do? Avoid bad, right? We want to always avoid bad, because bad is bad, and we try to avoid bad. Okay, so that's real important. So, the, the CO2 chiller fog machine style, how many people have looked a low-lying fog or low-lying cloud effect on, on Google or, or YouTube and saw the little cooler with the ice in it and a hole on one side, a hole on the other side, you put the fog in and it goes through. Okay? Well, you can do it. But now I gotta have a cord and I gotta plug it in, I gotta put it close to the dance floor, and then I have to uh, shoot the fog in there, and now I'm stuck here, and I got the big ugly cooler on there. Oh no, I painted it black, it looks really good, really sexy, right? All right, so there's another option. And then I'm using fog again, and then what's gonna happen? It's gonna go up, and then the fire alarm's gonna go off, and what's gonna happen? Fire sprinklers will go up. No, negative, that doesn't happen. That's only in Hollywood, only in Hollywood. Only in Hollywood. If, if the fire sprinkler, okay, if the alarms go off, usually the fire sprinklers are not gonna go off unless the fire is directly over the sprinkler head and the little fuse will link blows. Okay, and then what's gonna happen? All the sprinklers are gonna go off, right? No, just that sprinkler right there. So you have your handy dandy wedge, uh, little wedge kit, right? You have the wedge and you put the thing in there and you turn off the water and save it. Unless there's an actual fire, then you run like a and we all fire, fire, fire. No, we don't want to do that. The next thing is what I used to do back in the 70s and 80s. And I create, I had a, my own little do it from scratch fogger. It's right here, it's a picture of it. It's a 55 gallon drum, okay? With two water cooler heaters on the bottom, okay? And then a water pump and a, a fan that blows uh, air into the 55 gallon drum. The water would heat up with the uh, heaters and there's a little water pump that had a basket inside. I put the dry ice in the basket and the water would fall on top of it and hit the ice and then I turn on the fan and it would blow low wind cloud on the on the ground. It looked amazing until the third or fourth time I brought it out to the venue and that ice and that steel drum was rusting and I started getting rust through and now I have trails of water all over the place and I have rust and I have rust stains on their white carpet and I have this 55 gallon drum and a, you know, one of those trash can little dollies that I get in. Not so sexy at a wedding. Cool for a, a rave in the backyard or something like that, a Halloween thing, you know. But the cost to build that thing is not that cheap, okay? Do it from scratch style, okay? Spend your money appropriately. Know when you need to spend the, the money in the right way, okay? There's also something, the old school, probably in the last 20 years, uh, LeMaitre had something called the P-Super. Okay, it looks very similar to the uh, Nimbus. Okay, and it's been around for a long time. It's a, it's a good fog machine. Okay, it's very similar in shape, size. Okay, but there's issues with it. Okay, now, the issues are, it doesn't have a temperature sensor on there, so it can boil the water. Okay, so boiling water and dry ice creates a violent reaction, which will allow that water to what just flame onto the dance floor. And what do you have now is a swimming pool. And a swimming pool at a wedding might be fun, but we would consider that bad in most venues, correct? And we try to do what? Avoid, Avoid bad. bad, right? Because bad is bad. Then they have the new, the Ultratech. Okay, that's the Ultratech dry icer. Same issue, same manufacturer. They kind of split off, one's a European uh, manufacturer, and the other one is now Canadian manufacturer. What was good about these two particular machines, okay, was nobody could get them, but they were real hard to find, which was good for me, because I had one. And I was the only person in my area to be able to do low light cloud effects, okay? I made a lot of money. Now it's becoming a little more, more easy and user friendly to get them. So just like a regular fog machine, if we don't do it correctly, and we have water moisture on the floor and don't do it the way it should be done in practice, 
we might not be using it. So I'll have a thousand dollar piece of machinery here that I cannot use at an event. And we want to avoid that, right? That would be bad, you know? So the best, and I've used them all, and I've created them all, okay, is the Nimbus. Hands down is the best. There's some great features to the Nimbus, okay? It has dual heating elements. It has dual heating elements. It has dual heating elements. So it can create quick hot water quickly, okay? The effect lasts between two to eight minutes. It's just for a moment. And Randy Bartlett was talking about making moments earlier. We want to capture that moment and make a wow moment. I'll show you some pictures in a little while about wow moments, okay? It lasts about two to eight minutes, okay, approximately. And we're gonna show you one way it lasts two to three minutes, and we'll show you another way with a different fogger on the side for the second run, how it can last 10 or 15 minutes. Just depends on how you use your fogger and what look you're trying to create, okay? On average, the way we're gonna try to use it for a first dance or a grand entrance, about three to four minutes, okay? The average heat up time for this, and most people, how many people have just normal wedding venues out there? They're not industrial style, you know, it's a normal banquet hall. Usually they have about 15 amp breakers on the walls, right? Okay, along with the coffee pots and everything else plugged in them, right? Okay, so we'll talk about power management in a second. It takes about 30 minutes to heat up if you're using the double heating elements. Quick, it'll do it quickly, okay? I'll show you ways to create different looks with that. It's real important. So we talked about ice earlier. So there's two different styles of ice. Okay, there's two different styles. We have the pellet style, kind of looks like your little finger, little, little pellets about the size of your little finger. And then we have the blocks. And if you use the pellet style, all you need is a cool ice scooper and a cooler. That'd be nice, right? Ice scooper, cooler. How cool is that? If you purchase the block style, it might be the only thing available in your area. So you might not have any other options. Still makes an amazing effect, okay, if done correctly, right? But you need a cooler. You need an ice scooper. You need a hammer. I need a hammer? I need a burlap sack, because we're having burlap races later, right? Because what happens if I take a hammer and I hit it on the paper bag that the ice came in? Bags gonna rip. And then where's the ice gonna go? And that is what? Bad. That is bad. And we try to do what? Avoid bad. Avoid bad. Okay, so we got a burlap sack. Then what? Well, we need more time, because we gotta break it up. Okay, and where am I gonna do it? Out back, out front, in my car? Okay, you might live in a cold area, it might be snow out there. Can I hit it on the snow? I don't know what, you know, so be careful, all right? And also, somebody asked earlier about the ice powder issues. If you use a block, and you take your hammer and you bust up that big block of ice, what happens? Did you ask me earlier? And what happens to your ice? Gone, right? Immediate, quick fog, but it's gone, right? The instant. How's the last two minutes? Not that that's, it's, it, there is an issue, but if you came, if you, now you're here, you're getting educated, you're a little edutainment, right? A little edutainment. So, ice powder is issue, okay? There's ways to get around the ice powder. Well, you're going to get ice powder. Most times you're gonna get ice powder. With pellets, not so much. Sometimes yes, but most of the time no. With the blocks, when you bust the ice up, it's gonna get into fine particulates, okay? You can take your time, you can do this at home before you get there and place it in your cooler, okay? You can take your gloves, loose fitting gloves are always best because ice is very cold. We'll talk about that in a second, but ice is cold. Take that ice that you broke up and take the big clumps and put it into your cooler. You might go through a little bit more ice, but the effect is gonna look a lot better. You're not gonna prematurely cool your water or have an effect that you're not ready for at any given time. Okay, so that'll help with the ice powder issues real important all right dry ice it's a hun negative 109 degrees fahrenheit okay that's cold it's damn cold all right so we talked about ppe you know what ppe is personal protective equipment okay gloves they okay, want to keep yourself safe right because you don't want to not be able to grab your microphone later because your hand your fingers just fall and fell off right that would be bad right okay if we want to avoid that at all costs, okay? So 100 and negative 109, cold, cold, all right? So use gloves to protect yourself from frostbite. The best kind of gloves to use, okay? This is what the manufacturer recommends, okay? And if you read the, M anybody know what an MSDS is? Material Data Safety Sheet? Or now it's called the SDS, the, sa the Safety Data Sheet, right? Because of global harmonization, right? 
It says use loose fitting gloves. Why would I want to use loose fitting gloves? More insulation, or if they if I start freezing my fingers, I can get them off quickly. Okay, so no ice back on my hands, and I can warm up faster. What I use, I use either gaff, gaff kind of gloves or like mechanic style gloves. That's what I use. As long as you don't leave the scooper in the cooler, you'll be just fine. You won't need to go with the loose fitting gloves. But know what the manufacturers recommend for the particular ice you choose, right? Use a sturdy ice scooper. Okay, so when you go to transition the ice from the, look at this, look at the scooper right here. Scooper. Nice. Do that with a plastic scooper. What do we have? We have blue confetti all over the place, right? That would be bad. Okay, use a good solid scooper. It's real important. Don't leave it in the cooler. I've done it several times on accident. You're in a hurry, you're in a rush. Oh, let me just put this here. I'll just take it there for a second. I go to do my first dance and I'm like, where's my scooper? Where's my scoop? Oh my gosh, it's inside the cooler. So there you go. Now I'm getting frostbite, yes, but I'm still gonna do the effect because I'm a, I'm a trooper, right? So we gotta, we gotta remember that. Non-locking, sturdy cooler. See that cooler? No lock, okay? If you use a locking cooler, it can go boom. Boom would be bad at a wedding, unless you're doing some kind of confetti or something like that. Boom is usually bad, especially when it comes to an enclosed cooler, okay? Or what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a billion pieces all over the floor, just like your, your ice scooper, right? We don't wanna, we wanna avoid that. Also, I don't know if anybody's told you, but this is an atmospheric effect. It is actually a cloud. And has anybody ever gone through the mountains or gone through the mountains and clouds? What happens to your windshield? Fogged gets fogged up, gets wet, right? Moisture. Okay? Not a lot of moisture. Not like it's raining. There's a little bit of moisture. Okay? we got to be prepared for that. It's not a problem if we're prepared. Okay? So practice is important. Okay, so moisture may be may develop. So we want to have towels available or a dry mop, not a wet mop, like oh we're gonna mop the floor. No, a dry mop or some towels. And usually towels are quick and easy, nice fluffy little white towel but it's clean, set off to the side. Okay, so we'll be prepared for that. We talked about coolers, right? Styrofoam coolers. How many people have a styrofoam cooler at home? Great, I'm going to get my ice, got my styrofoam cooler. Not such a good idea. Okay. Think, think about it. If you didn't know. You just go get a cooler from, you know, you're at Albertsons and you, that's where you picked up your ice at, right? Got a styrofoam cooler, it was $4.99. Hey, cool, got my ice. Next thing you know, put it in the back of my car, breaks. Now I have ice all in the back of my car. I don't have my gloves. What am I gonna do? That's not good. Latching cooler, avoid at all costs. Unless you take the latch off, okay? They're good, sturdy, stainless steel Coleman coolers are nice, they look good, right? As soon as you make that latch, that thing's gonna off gas, okay? It's gonna start evaporating, okay? It's gonna change from a solid to a gas. It's gonna create pressure and that can go boom. I heard stories that people blew up the back of their cars or vans because they enclosed their ice. I'm not trying to scare you, just make, trying to make you aware, okay? That's what you're here for. You guys are smart. You're coming to learn this before you actually have to learn this in the field. Trial and error is no good when it comes to these things, okay? Plastic cooler with wheels. You're going to see one right there. Almost the same identical cooler. Right there. Costs about 30, 40 bucks at your Home Depot or your Walmart. Highly suggest wheels instead of trying to lug 30 to 50 pounds of dry ice to your event. Okay? Also, a couple things with coolers. When you open a cooler and you get the one with hinges on the side, they're usually little plastic hinges, right? And the door opens sideways. Those plastic hinges will break. This stuff is super cold, it is super thin plastic. All of a sudden now I have an exposed cooler with or my cooler lid just went flying across the room. Replace that with a, a webbing style material. If that's the cooler, you might have one at home already. Okay? Also, when you open that lid, it's gonna go because the plastic is like, I don't wanna be in here, right? Okay? Webbing, great fix. Also the little hinge pieces, the little silicone lube will make them quiet. Okay? Because the last thing you want to do is right before the first dance and everything's quiet. You're back here going, yeah! what the heck? We're a bunch of crows in the back, right? It's great for Halloween. Well, that's where you're using your low-lying cloud effect, right? So it's important. So make sure you have your cooler already prepped. You know that you're gonna know this because when you go to your garage and, or wherever you practice this at, you're gonna go, oh yeah, 
that's where that crazy sound came from because Mikey Mike said so. Right? This is the, this little flippy lid right here. Easy, no, no sound, no craziness. The side one's a little, little tougher, okay? This is starting to get cold already, okay? Sitting it just on top of the cooler, okay? So if you're like me and happen to forget things from time to time, and you forgot your gloves, okay? You go to grab this off the cooler, and it's been over there for the last three hours because we're doing the first dance after dinner. Might be a little cold for your fingers, might not get the grip that you need, okay? So set it off to the side, usually hide it. We'll talk about scrimming in a second, a few minutes. Okay, so biggest thing, styrofoam coolers, no bueno, right? Stainless steel coolers are good, yes? Bad. Bad, they go what? Ooh. Boom, boom is bad and we try to do what? Avoid bad. Avoid bad, okay, that's not good. If you take off the latch, you can probably use it, okay? It doesn't seal that tightly, it has enough to build pressure, it'll, it'll off gas it a little bit, so just remember that. Possibly, but there is moisture in there, and if you get start getting moisture, it's gonna create a, a cloud of itself inside, and it could create ice, and ice could block that, okay? Just know that, okay? But that's a good question, it's a good question. Or if you are gonna use something similar to that, install a pressure relief valve on top, so it always has a way to do it, okay? So you can, you can definitely use it, but my recommendation is, I've been using my plastic cooler for probably the one I have now, probably for three or four years, probably because the other one, I don't know, got dirty or I don't know what happened to it. Um, and I haven't had any issues with it. Besides the hinges breaking and things like that, like I discussed, have no issues. Okay, so roll, nice rolling cooler, wheels, awesome, okay? So we talked about, uh, oh, where do I get my dry ice? Okay, how much does it cost? Okay, how much does dry ice cost? Typically, dry ice costs anywhere from 50 cents to $1.75 a pound, okay? How much am I gonna need to do one first dance? Anybody know? About 10 pounds, okay, approximately 10 pounds. Yes, you in the back, sir. Two pounds, I only need two pounds. Okay. If you want a little first dance. Okay. About 10 pounds, usually about 10 pounds is about right, okay? And that's about six or seven scoops of little scooper to fill up that basket. Okay? Because we'll talk about filling up the basket in a second, how it might be a little difficult and we need to practice. All right? 50 cents, get an account, okay, at your local, well, where I get mine, I get it from a local gas and welding distributor. Okay, I use Prax Air, there's Air Gas. There's a, probably several different ones in your local area. Use the, call them up. Not every location has ice available due to the way they transport and, and the, uh, you know, they start out with 500 pounds and they end up getting there, it's like got that 30 pounds left, it might not be cost effective for them, okay? So, distributors, like ice cream distributors, they use dry ice all the time, okay? You guys probably, anybody, everybody heard a little ice cream truck driving by their house, right? Good chance that they're using dry ice in their in their, in their trucks, okay? Check with them, might be able to purchase, it might be more, it might be $3 a pound. $2.29 a pound of basket rums, very good. good, good input, good input, okay? But it's available, right? Or it might be only in brick, but it might be if you maybe pre-order it. Hey, you, you think I can get 30 pounds of dry ice blocks next week? So you know, oh no, this is all we have for our ice cream. You know, be careful. So welding distributors, ice distributors, ice cream distributors. Um, also grocery stores. Okay, Albertsons. Do you have Albertsons in your area? Some of you maybe yes, no. Okay, they might have an offshoot of Albertsons in your area, but. They also work with Praxair, which uses um, Penguin brand dry ice, okay? And I'm just throwing that out there because they have a cool website to be able to find dry ice in your area where Penguin delivers. And they use, I think, air gas to deliver for uh, Penguin dry ice. There's a website right there. It says dryiceideas.com. Okay, you can jot that down, take a picture of it. Dryiceideas.com. And the reason the map is there is when you log into that website, it allows you to click on your area and try to find dry ice in your local area. Okay. Might not be available, but another resource for you. I would try gas distributors at first. Get an account, you're probably going to get the cheapest price. If I roll it off the street to my gas distributor, it's going to be like a buck a pound. Since I have an account, it's 50 cents. So it's cheap. So for me, I can fill up a cooler like this for 15 or 20 dollars, and this will last me all night. So this is about 60, 70 pounds of dry ice if it's full to the top. Okay, probably a good size bag of dog food, right? Okay. So ideas to get dry ice. Make sure it's available in your area. 
guest safety, client safety, okay? It's, it's important that we know how our, our effects work. Just like a regular fog machine, if you lay it down by the dance floor, what usually comes out of a regular fog machine? Besides fog, no, regular fog machine, regular fog machine, like a juice. Juice, you get juice, and juice is made out of what? Kind of like oily based product, right? Kind of something similar to that, and some of them are, okay? It might be a water soluble one, but it gets a little slippery. Kind of like bubble machine, bubble fluid stuff, right? And next to the dance floor might be a bad idea, okay? So, same thing with a, a low line cloud effect. We already discussed that clouds are made of what? Moisture. moisture, and moisture is what? Turns into like kind of water, right? And water on the dance floor when people are dancing could be what? Bad, bad right? So we try to avoid that bad by knowing that it actually can happen. How many people have ever walked on a, on a kitchen floor and it's wet? Everybody? Do you walk different on a kitchen floor when it's wet than you do when it's dry? If you don't know, what's gonna happen? Woo, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall on my ass every time. Guaranteed, if I don't know it's wet, and it's wet, and I hit that kitchen floor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack it. Guaranteed. Same with ice, right? You know, I'm not from a really cold area. Well, it might be super cold in Southern California, but that's just me. Right? It was 70 in my house. I was freezing. No. It's not like Florida. Where Florida is nice. How is you there? Except in July. <laughs> okay. So moisture. The floor may get slippery. So during your bridal consultations, and these brides, one, you're, they're going to be fascinated with dancing on a cloud. They're going to want it for their wedding. You're going to want to bring it because it makes you look amazing. Okay, the pictures are beautiful. It is a wow moment. Nothing sells better than that wow moment. And believe me, you are going to make a million dollars by using a low line cloud effect. If you do it correctly. Okay. But if you let your clients know, hey, the floor may be a little moist. I'm not talking water all over the place. Okay, if done correctly but it could be moist. If they're prepared for it, and we all have our clients practice their first dance before the, the dance, right? We tell them, hey, six months out or three months out, I want you to practice your first dance. Why? Why, why do I want you to practice? Why? Well, maybe you look like a fool, right? But hey, maybe I want to be all macho and I want to dip my wife for my first dance. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden I can't hold her up, right? Boom, what happens to the back of her head? On the floor would be bad, right? Amen. Well, if we practice about three months beforehand, she has time to heal. <laughs> and during your first dance, you may not you may not dip your wife, okay? You might choose to opt out of that option because you just started out physically capable or you don't have that cool dance move, <sighs> right? Swabby move just didn't work. So practice your first dance. It's very important, okay? Also, if they're practicing their first dance, make sure they're practicing in their high heels or if that's what they plan on wearing or their cons or their dress shoes. The, and the surface of the dance floor, like they probably gonna dance floor at their wedding venue, okay? If it's gonna be a marble floor, hey, practice your, your dance your dance in the kitchen. If that's kind of marbly like what you might see, right? If they're gonna chant, dance on a carpeted lobby area, then practice like that. Because maybe their heels get stuck in the carpet and they can't do the spin that they were gonna do. Same thing with the dance floor, okay? Know that it might be a little moist. So first, make sure you're in the right shoes that you're dancing with, it's very important. Educate your clients. If they are prepared for this, everything's gonna go off seamlessly, okay? How many people have done a first dance, or a father-daughter dance, and, and I do father-daughter dances with my low-lying cloud effects all the time, okay? How many people invite the rest of the fathers and daughters out to the dance floor to dance with the father or daughter that's on the floor? Yep, okay, are they prepared? No. Okay. That could be bad, right? Especially if you're, they're not prepared and there's a little moisture on the floor. So how how we gauge that, we talk to our clients, we give them a little heads up, okay? And we say, hey, during our first dance, if I notice any moisture on the floor, we're gonna opt out of the father-daughter uh, thing because bringing everybody on the floor, or if it's important to you, we'll still bring them on the floor, but we're not gonna do low lying cloud effect, okay? So it's real important. Education is important. Your clients are gonna perceive you as the expert because you know exactly how that effect's gonna treat them, the venue is going to be super happy because no, they don't have to rush anybody to the hospital. And big red lights out in front of their venue looks what? <laughs> okay, so we want to avoid that. Okay, and it's simple to avoid. It's very simple. Okay, anything you do, just a little planning, a little practice. Right? Kid safety. We talk about open dancing with the father daughter or even open dancing. You already you already checked it out during the first dance. You know that the room's 
the temperature and the moisture level and all everything jives, it's miraculous. We do the low light cloud effect, everything works great. We're gonna do it during open dancing, which is amazing. People get to actually dance in the cool cloud, it's awesome. Great for pictures and video, it's amazing. But if there's moisture, not, not such a good idea, okay? Also, when I'm scooping this, okay, when I'm scooping dry ice out for my first dance, I'm a single owner operator. I've been doing this 35 years by myself. I have some helpers that help from time to time, but a lot of times I'm the guy pushing play, running out on the MC on the mic, and then when the first dance is going, I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, and I run back, and while they got a few minutes to dance on the dance floor with no cloud, okay, so they get some great pictures of no cloud, then I go in the back and I open the cooler quietly, because I already prepped for that, right? And I scoop my ice, am I just doing it like this? No, I'm going like, crap, the first dance, it's only three minutes long, I gotta get the ice in the cooler, I gotta get the ice in the cooler, right? Okay, and how many scoops? That's one, two, two, three scoops. How many scoops am I at? I don't know. Okay, what's gonna happen to the ice going into the cooler? Because you're panicked. It could go, it could go everywhere. So be prepared and practice is important. No, count, count out loud. One, two, three, right? Okay, and try to aim at the hole. That's where it goes in the little square thing. Once you put the ice in the hole, what's gonna happen? Keep the, that's important. Keep the lever of the newest up, right? Okay. So, once you start putting the ice in, those little fine particles are gonna start going into the water and it's gonna create cloud. And where is the cloud gonna go? It's not gonna go out the front because you're not building up any pressure. It's gonna come back at you. Okay, it's gonna come back at you. And now what? I can't see how much ice is in the basket and I can't see if there's any little pieces of ice made it around the rim to where I can't close the lid so I can't get the right output for my fodder, okay? I have to close the lid, get the output to go out forward. Okay, we're trying to create pressure. And the hole creates pressure. With gloves now, I can simply scoop that ice blindly, because I know it might be there, it might be my issue. Scoop it and just put it in the basket, close the lid nice and easy, and I go out to the dance floor. I'm gonna be in a rush. I've done this for a long time. Every wedding, first dance, I'm still trying to do it, right? I just, it might, might not take any longer to just go a little slower, but I just, the way I am. Right? And you, for the first time, are going to do the same thing. Guaranteed. Okay? So, just know that's going to happen, and if you're prepared for it, no problem. Okay? But, like I said, you're in a panic, getting scooping, going right, and I, oh, I just got a little too hard, and some ice goes wandering off that way. Who else is around the dance floor by your ice? Everybody. Okay? So, if you stage your Nimbus and your ice cooler next to the dance floor like this, and you have ice that goes around, what could happen? Or little kids can pick it up. Mommy, guess what I got? Ah! And screaming bloody murder kids in a wedding is probably bad. Right? They can get they can get burns. So we want to try to avoid burns because burns are bad. bad okay? Now, like I said, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to educate you. It's very important that you know these things. Okay? And it God, I'm telling you this is a beautiful effect. So know that it can go there. Have your staff. Okay, if you this is the only place you can do it, have staff be ready to push it out of the way, keep everybody safe. My suggestion is keep it behind the DJ booth and get yourself a cart. Okay? Because when you do it back by the wall somewhere, you simply roll it out to the area. Nobody, nobody, you don't kill the buds moment. They see you out here scooping, they're gonna start seeing cloud effects coming out, right? And then they're gonna go, hmm. And then the bride and groom are what? A couple seconds late. I'm already ruined. It already looks cool and there's no wow moment. So make that wow moment when you come out. Okay? So keep it back. Use the carts. They're very, very, very helpful. Okay? And we'll talk about that in a second. Dry ice. God, these nasty things. I'm trying to be all positive, but I want you to be educated. Okay? This is edutainment. So you got to be educated. Class, uh, dry ice is actually classified as a class nine hazardous material. Anybody know that? Okay, it is. That's okay. You can transport it safely, but you need to know the laws and rules in your area. DOT is uh, really strictly on that, but somebody pulls you over, you have dry ice and you have the right answers, not a problem. You have it in the proper cooler, not a problem. Something sturdy, I wouldn't go putting it in the styrofoam cooler. It's not rated, right? Okay. Keep it in your car, truck, or van. Open the windows. Okay. It happened to me recently. Completely forgot about it. I did it. I did a special wedding down uh, down in the LA area, and then I had a training uh, event in San Diego. St 
still had 50, 60 pounds of ice in my trunk of my car when I went down to my training event. The next day I woke up, went to my car, go to the class, and I was sitting in the car. That was just not quite right. Oh, I still got 70 pounds of ice, dry ice. It dissipated or it displaced all the oxygen in my car, and I was starting to get a little light headed, and I felt it. I'm like, oh, that's not good. I forgot. Just roll down the windows and keep it well ventilated. Not a problem. Every HVAC system in any venue you're going to work at is going to be plenty well ventilated. Okay, you're not going to have one issue with a standard fog like this. No problem at all. Okay, so don't don't panic. Just know it's very important. Roll down the windows. Keep it keep it um, keep it ventilated. Even if it's in the trunk of your car, it will come through the seats and things like that, and that uh, would not be good. Okay, but it's very very important. It's oh my gosh, it's. It happened to me, so I do want to, I want to share that with you guys. We talked about fire alarms, okay? Fire alarms. Can it set off a fire alarm? Yeah. Yes. Most likely, uh, no, not most likely. It can, but most likely no, okay? Unless, unless we're staging our fogger, and you know, get to know your rooms. Okay, everybody know what a fire alarm little thing looks like? And they're usually stuck against the side of the wall over here, right? But if that's the place that I was staging my Nimbus, and I put the ice in, and as soon as I close the lid, what's gonna happen is a little fog is gonna kind of roll up the wall a little bit. That would probably be the only time you're ever gonna set off a fire alarm. So if you know that ahead of time, never gonna happen, okay? I haven't heard of a case that anybody set off a fire alarm with a Nimbus. I have never done it, saying it's out there, okay? Just know that. So, fire trucks to your venue would be bad. Chilled fog, we talked about that again. So if you try to opt to go with a chilled fog machine, fog can rise, set off your fire alarms, that would be bad. So let's do, let's not do that. Get yourself a Nimbus and avoid that. Power management, they asked about power management a little bit earlier today. The Nimbus pulls 12.6 amps. So we talked about most venues have about a 15 amp circuit. So the only thing plugged into one of these circuits is a Nimbus, pretty much, and maybe one flashy thing. All right, so power management's important, so you need to know that. If you're using it the way Alan has this one set up here, he's using dual heating elements. He's chose to take power from one circuit and another circuit. So if you're not a good electrician and you don't know the circuits in your area, I would go with the longer heat up time and use a hot water. It's, it, avoids, it saves a lot of time during the heat up process, okay? Venue hot water is about 140, 150 degrees, okay? So if you use the venue hot water, I've actually used venue hot water and put ice in my machine uh, between a first dance and a father-daughter dance and it worked perfectly. Okay? But it's always perfect to get it to the temperature. They've designed this thing to be so user friendly with the temperature control that I never have issues. Always had issues with the other foggers that I've used in the past. Nimbus, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe Alan has 175 degrees. A lot of time. Really helps. And like I said, I've done it with just hot water from the kitchen. Okay. And how do I go get my water? A bucket. I get one bucket? No. More than one? Why? Fire brigade of buckets? Okay. How much does the nose hold for water? About five gallons, right? So if I go take my five gallon white little five gallon, not the orange Home Depot ones. Okay, don't go get the orange Home Depot one. Doesn't look so sexy at a wedding. Okay. Grab two five gallon buckets. Fill them halfway up. If I pull one five gallon bucket all the way up to the top, and then I'm trying to go like this to through the kitchen and and not a good thing, okay? Two five gallon buckets. One is gonna balance you. If I got one five gallon bucket like this, how, how hard is it to walk? If I have two five gallon buckets filled up halfway, nice and easy, I'm balanced, I look like I belong there, right? I don't look like I'm retarded and get on the little bus, right? <laughs> Serious, right? So, a couple five gallon buckets, easy to transport your water in the venues. Some venues don't have a sink that will fit a five gallon bucket. You might need to bring a funnel or a hose, okay? Sometimes all the water that's available is the bathroom sink. How are you gonna get a five gallon bucket in the bathroom sink? Happened to me. Smaller, bu smaller bucket, coffee cup, coffee cup, coffee cup. Now six hours later, coffee cup, coffee cup. Okay, coffee pot, you know, hope that fits under the sink, okay? So know these things, be prepared, okay? Do a site survey, know your venues, know what's available, okay? Sometimes the kitchen's right in the middle of dinner service, they don't want you in the kitchen. You might be out back using the garden hose. Okay? It's possible. Just be prepared. Yes. So filling the Nimbus, the way I do my Nimbus, 
and I give, and when you're starting heating up the water, a little evaporation happens, okay? I fill my Nimbus, I put the basket to the top position, okay, I plug it in, and then I fill it up to where the water is just at the bottom of the basket. Okay, not coming through the basket, I'm not that good at gauging, right? But you can kind of see where it, when it comes to the basket. The light will come on green, or no light will come on red. That means the, uh, cir the circuit is on. The other fog machines out there also don't have a cutoff circuit. So if it overboils the water, it, it's just overheating and now you got this problem, okay? If this uh, overboils the water that has a little plunger inside, okay, when it gets too low, it just shuts off the machine. So unfortunately, you need to watch it from time to time. I've never had it my Nimbus because of the temperature control, get rid of water, never. So it's, it works really well. So right to the bottom, you're good to go. So, well, if you overfill it, what's gonna happen? It's not so much bad, but when you go put the ice in, it's already reacting. The effects is already gonna happen when you're trying to fill the ice up. So it's gonna be a little confusing. All right, venue management. A happy management is a, is, or a good man is a happy management, right? Keep your management happy. Venue, ask for permission, don't beg for forgiveness. First rule. Don't just do this, they'll never say, no, no, you know, right? It's not regular fog, right? It's not, it's not regular, it's a cloud. It's awesome, it's beautiful, okay? But ask for permission. Maybe schedule a time that the management can review this. Hey, we're not gonna let you do that. I have one venue that only allows me, they have no they have a no fog policy in their contract. I'm the only one that can come in and do a low-line cloud effect because I actually took the time to go to the video or go to the venue, show the management, I actually invited the fire department, the fire uh, fire chief there, he bought off on it. So if I ever need to do it in any other venue, I got a fire department out there, I got video, and I got these other venues that say, yeah, it's amazing. He does a great job with it. He's prepared, he's ready to go. Okay? So, don't forget to videotape it, it's real important, okay? Because you can show it to other venues without having to do a demo, okay? So, use that as a tool. Build relationships with your venues and your fire marshals. They're, they're great, because they got your back. And if they know that you're on top of your game, they're gonna give you approval on everything, okay? Less, less likely give you uh, pushback. So, proper lighting. Now we get into the beauty stuff, right? I love it. So, proper lighting. Chave has some amazing lights to light this, light your clouds amazingly, okay? And to make your cloud pop, it requires some nice light, okay? So to do it correctly, uh, moving heads work great, floor wash lighting looks good, okay? Even something simple as a, as a LSF 75, just poised to the dance floor, will make an amazing effect, just like these, okay? Take great, take, how many people have a good video camera? Okay, how many people are using their iPhone or smartphone? Get a good video camera, okay? Go put it on a tripod in the back of the room, aim it towards the dance floor, hit play. Before you start your first dance, you don't even have to have a videographer to do it. I'm not a videographer, but I get some amazing videos out of my clients, especially the ones they do. Same with pictures. Get a good camera, don't just use your iPhone, okay? Get a nice camera, get a Canon or a Nikon or a whatever else cam, you know, nice cameras are out there. It's important, or get a relationship with your photographers but how many people ask for photographers for pictures and they never get them? Oh yeah, all the time. So at least, one, if you're the photographer, and believe me, you can be mobile with this thing. I put my Canon around my neck. You'll see that in the video I have here in a little bit. I am in the perfect position, right behind the Nimbus, right by the bride and groom, and I can take a really cool picture, angle picture, and believe me, my photographers are drooling on some of the pictures I've taken, and I'm not definitely not a professional photographer. But almost everybody can hold down the button, and you're gonna get one good picture out of a thousand, right? You can do that in 1.2 seconds. Highly suggest you do that. Now you don't want to take that away from doing the effect, okay? I look a little funky sometimes, I totally agree, but I have no other options, but I can sell this to my clients as well, okay? So here's the Nimbus in action a little bit. Uh, this is about a 20 foot dance floor, okay? The bride and groom are dancing here, nice puff of smoke on the, on the beginning. This is a little bit of edited video. Uh, you'll see it go away, but you see the fogger go away as well. Uh, sorry about that quick video, but Remember we talked about, we train our uh, clients to dance. He wanted to dip his wife, he already knew ahead of time that he could do that, okay? He's prepared. Quick lighting cues, we can change it from wash lighting to atmosphere, or to event lighting, right? That is the Hellenic Center, whoever said that. Oh, yeah, that is the Hellenic Center, okay? Really pretty, makes the bride and groom look. DMX control gives you control over your lighting, okay? It's real important. This is another venue. Photographer all of a sudden sat in front of my fog machine. 
right when I did it. And she's, she's like, oh my gosh, right? But she was off to the side when I started. But here, here I am taking pictures. This is during the day, you see the, the bright lights out there. If I didn't have wash lighting or effect lighting, it would not look as good. It gives me the ability. This is where I asked all the audience to come out for the first dance. So I already knew, because I know the venue, and I know how it acts in that particular venue and where I can be, that it's safe enough to do that in that particular venue. In 1.2 seconds, I had the dance floor completely packed and they're doing a low line cloud effect. Completely safe, 100% safe. I know my venues, and I know how my fog machine acts, or my low line cloud effect acts. I stay back off the dance floor, okay, a little bit further. See how high? Over her head. I can get dramatic looks with this, dramatic looks. But the HVAC system in this building is very, very strong, and I don't have control over it. So having a cart is very important, okay? I'm able to go across the dance floor, and if you watch the fog, it's going to start blowing backwards. You see it blowing backwards right there? It's not going towards the bride and groom, okay? So you, you need to know that. So with, with a cart, you can get into the position that you need to do to do the best effect. It's a 20 by 20 foot dance floor, it's huge, okay? You might need to move, you want the photographer to get the best picture, but that initial burst of fog is where you talk to your photographer, you tell him what's gonna happen so he's prepared to get that awesome shot. Because that's what the client is gonna want, that awesome, amazing shot, okay? Same with here, big burst of cloud going up onto the client, right up to their shoulders. We just put some wash lighting onto the dance floor. And I'm using an iPad right on top of my Nimbus. It fits perfectly right on the Nimbus. And I'm using Show Express with a wireless controller. Okay? I have to control the lights. So I'm wirelessly cruising around because the thing's not plugged in because you don't have to have it plugged in once it's warm. Now I'm doing beautiful wash lighting on the floor. I'm moving around the dance floor and I'm controlling the lighting. Right there, I just changed the lighting cube to a wash or to a white light. Now I choose to use wash lighting instead of uh, spot lighting. Because if you ask any photographer, um, and you see a picture with a moving head stuck on a bride and groom, and they have the big harsh line that's cutting them in half, okay, if you soften that up and make it look elegant with wash or frost, it'll look a lot prettier, okay? So most of the pictures you'll see, probably all the pictures you see, it's more of a wash effect than a sharp, hard line effect. And that's due to communicating with my photographers to see that what works for them. So here, I'll tell you this. Uh, so here I'm taking pictures again. I'm in the perfect spot to take pictures. I do it myself, single owner operator. I gotta do what I can do, right? I'm moving around. And right here, I wanna change, hit the iPad, boom. I just control my dance floor with lighting and I'm already playing music, I'm ready to go. Wanna change the lighting control again? Simply hit my uh, iPad on top of my Nimbus. And Alan created this beautiful spot for right there. It works perfect, it's awesome, it's beautiful, right? So I can make, if the dance floor look amazing with simple lighting control and DMX control, really gonna get you to the next level. Notice the output of the Nimbus is not really coming out that hard because this is about two or three minutes into the effect because I choose to get a big burst at the beginning and not a small burst all the way across the time frame. Okay, there's other ways to lengthen, depends on your client and what they want or what look they want, okay? Beautiful, elegant looks, soft lighting, really pops that cloud. You notice the white, the look of the white cloud, and then it's kind of grayish dark. It gives you contrast, it looks beautiful in pictures, okay? So lighting is really important. Get yourself some movers, some wash lighting, something simple as an LSF 75 to point towards the dance floor. Even the pin spots with a small gel aiming towards the dance floor with a breakup gel, just enough to highlight that uh, cloud effect. It's gonna look amazing, all right? Beautiful wash, gobo projection in the back room with breakup patterns, okay? that bride look happy? She does. That was a moment. She's going to remember that for the rest of her life. And every time she opens that wedding album, she's going to go, oh, that was so beautiful. I love that effect, right? It's really, really important. This is the same uh, picture you saw at the Hellenic Center uh, with the first bride and groom with the uh, wash lighting. This is just from a different angle because I actually had to go all the way on the other side of the dance floor to shoot the fog. It allowed me to do that with the rolling cart. The rolling cart is real important. If you're going to purchase a Nimbus, Save your money as well and purchase your own rolling cart. If you don't, you want to do it from scratch, I have some great videos online you can look at, totally free. Just uh, ways to create your own like anvil style ones or anything. You can even use you know, the 55 gallon drum trash cans. You know how they have those little lock-in kind of wheels? Put a piece of plywood on that and then you Velcro it to it. Something to get it around, okay? Don't just leave it at the edge of the dance floor, okay? Because it, it, it might have issues, not the fogger have issues, just the atmosphere and everything else. You want to try to avoid
avoid that and you're you're prepared right so you know these things it's really important a few uh vertical trusses cloud we're doing breakup patterns on the dance floor to make it real pretty we've got some butterflies in the bag and they're really happy right change it up a little bit a little vertical trussing a little line cloud it's really important to get that color on or the lights on the cloud a little backlighting to do some really cool things. Let your photographers know. The photographers that I work with and know what I do, and they're prepared and they have other shots set up, and they know what they want to look, they sell that to their client, because they know they're working with me, and they're gonna make some really cool, amazing looks. Okay, this happened to be a casino night. I was doing lighting only for a band, but we're doing low light cloud for a band. Because if I show this to a client, they go, that's exactly how I want my venue to look, and that's, that's the coolness that I, I just want to bring to this party. Okay, so you can do that lighting only, lighting with a DJ, lighting with a band, you can go light cloud effect. Nobody, you see anybody dancing? But everybody's sitting around playing poker, doing their thing, and they're looking around, this place is the coolest, right? And they just spent more money or they contributed more money because they're having a great time. Okay? Simple lighting could work as well. How many, how many up lights do we have on that back wall? Four? Four up lights on the back wall, a little wash on the dance floor. We're over here. You just have a little bit of wash lighting the bride. She's spotlighted, right? Nice soft wash. Looks really pretty. But the cloud underneath is what really does it. Okay. Brown parquet dance floors aren't the prettiest thing in the world. When you roll out a nimbus, it completely covers it. It covers, you don't see through. You cannot see that dance floor. Okay, it blocks the dance floor. Okay. It really create a really amazing look. Okay. Right? Is that amazing? Just a soft little touch with lighting. And the nimbus looking amazing. Look how high that cloud is. Okay. That's the first 15 to 20 seconds within the first dance. Get some amazing pictures. Now I always try to give the bride and groom a, a chance to dance without the cloud so they have different options of pictures because they might not like the look or most of the time that's why they hire me because I'm pretty much the only one in my area that does it and I book a lot of clients this way. So it's real important. Okay. I can show you how we created this effect. If you see the, the little light that's right there on the dance floor, that's actually their monogram. Like we have monograms on the dance floor here really create some cool animation and cool morphing and, and dynamics when, you're, when you morph the cloud with a monogram on the dance floor. So I'll show you that here in this video. I'm not 
DJing the event. I don't have a purpose to be there, but bring my Nimbus, which I do all the time. I charge between $400 and $500 to do that, okay? I gotta get there. It's an hour's drive, it's an hour's time. I gotta let the water heat up for an hour. I gotta go get the ice. All that stuff is time, right? I charge for that, okay? Plus, I'm gonna make that venue look amazing. I'm gonna make that DJ look amazing. I wanna get paid for that, okay? So, how many people do 25 shows a year? How many people do more? 50, 100, okay? Do 50 shows a year. I always wanna do 50 shows a year, okay? 52 weeks in a year, right? I want a two-week vacation. I, I, I'm just like, I just like, I'm, I'm lazy, okay? I wanna take two weeks off, okay? So if I can do one event a week, wanna be one event a weekend as well, at least that's what I strive for, that's my, that's my goal. And I bring it out, I'm doing just my basic price, I'm making $12,500 just for bringing low light cloud effect. Okay, it costs me $10 in ice. I already have my effect. I pay off my Nimbus in a couple of events. Done, amazing. If I'm bringing it to events or I have the opportunity to charge more in my area, some people can charge five, they sell it by the look. If you want this amazing dancing on a cloud of look, it's just gonna be a mere $1,200 for you and we can make this happen for you. You're that kind of salesman, sell away. I'm not, I'm still learning. I like to make stuff, I compete here, right? So, but average upsell, 200 to 500 bucks, ballpark, okay? Do I give it away with some packages to book the event? Yes, I do, and I book the event, okay? Because I just made $5,000 on an event for a $10 investment, or for ice, all right? So, just like a photo booth, I use that as a tool sometimes. Do I charge $1,000 for my photo booth? Yes, I do. Do I also give it away to get to the event? Yes, I do. Just depends on the event. Depends on what you're spending and how much our package is. Okay, that's just me. Okay, Chauvet has some great graphics. Everybody has a card in front of you. There's like this little pamphlet. They have some great lighting looks, with dancing on the cloud effects. They actually prepared this for you. It's a download on their website. You can take this and they will brand it for you. They'll put your DJ name on there for you. Okay, and send that to your PDF and you can show it to your clients or they have these other really, really pretty uh, effect uh, pictures. People ask me, I get millions of emails, okay? You might be somebody that's emailed me, hey Mike, I got a Nimbus, I don't have any pictures, can you send me a picture? I would love to send you a picture, but the um, simple, t as soon as you put it on your website, you're gonna get a phone call from about 500 DJs around the world going, that's Mikey Mike's picture and you better take it off. Even though I gave you permission, you're still gonna get it, so I've just decided not to give people my pictures, just for that reason, okay? You might get a picture of mine and put it on your flyer that I don't know about, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. But, Chavez done a nice, really cool thing here. You put your logo on the bottom and uh, have something to show your clients initially before you get it. This is an effect that you can actually purchase or actually purchase after you sell it. You know, hey, would you like low light cloud effects? This is what it can do. Look at Mikey Mike's videos, they're great. It looks amazing, right? Okay. He's in Southern California, I can bring this to my, our area, no problem. You can sell it three or four times over. You can already have it paid for before you even bring it out for the first time. Because how many people book weddings two, three, four, five, six months ahead of time? Some people in here book them two or three, four years ahead of time, I'm not, but I'm not that good. Okay? But there are people. I know these people. I wish I was that good. But it can give you some great graphics to use for yourself as well.